Hello, Simon here. I'm going to show you a breakdown of some shots and how we used VFX Suite to fix those, or rather to add additional elements to them. Actually, I have to give a shout out to Leo, who is a senior designer on the marketing team, because he's put together these amazing shots and I'm just breaking them down. But as well as that, what I wanted to do is to also give you some workarounds for when things don't exactly always go to plan. So on this shot, this is where we want to be going. We've got the logos on the front and the side of the cab here. And the, and the container has got the yellow coloring and also the logo on the side. So this is the original shot. And Leo set this up in an interesting way. I'm going to show you how to put on the logo on the side here. But I just want to show you how the color has been added to the side here of the container. So we've got a yellow solid. And if I add Kingpin Tracker to this from RegArt VFX, what we can do is we can then begin to pin this to this corner area of the truck. Just going to do this roughly at first so I can then see what I'm doing and so on. And also just put these to, to the end. Don't worry, I'm not going to run you through every single process for this shot, but I want to, on some key ones, set up exactly what's going on. Just let's zoom in slightly. And what I'm doing is just corner pinning the top and the sides here. And don't worry about this bottom bit under here, because there's another technique we can do for coloring that as well. What I want to do is get the most of the, the side area covered first. Here we go. And notice, by the way, we've got these useful vanishing lines or perspective lines. You remember vanishing point from your time in art class at school. But they also give you a good indication of whether you've got a line or a perspective correct on your original selection. It's pretty easy here because we've got a reasonably square outline. But by the way, you can also then drag these, just click on the edge line and then drag these around so you can then change your mind, but keep those two points in perspective. Same with the up and down lines as well. Here we go. And let's just reset back to the interface. Select the background layer, because if you haven't used Kingpin Tracker, the trick is you apply it to the layer that you want to composite over the background, and then you go into the tracking section and you choose that background that you want to track. And this is a planar tracker. So when you press track, I'm tracking backwards here because the shot I chose was in the middle of the timeline. And let's just turn on the keyframes. It's adding a keyframe to every single frame based on the corners of the area I'm tracking. And by the way, these keyframes down at the bottom here are actually belonging to this top instance of the Kingpin tracker here. And so for this second instance of Kingpin, we've got the keyframes generated. And let's just go to that end one, press shift, snap to that keyframe and start to track forwards. By the way, you'll notice that the update is happening inside the panel on the left hand side, inside the effects controls panel. Because Kingpin is actually too fast for After Effects to update. After Effects has got loads of background processes that it has to do to actually refresh the screen. So this is why this panel exists inside Kingpin Tracker. And here we go, a pretty painless way to be able to create a track. Let's just turn off these lines, close this up here, and deselect the actual name so then I can just see it without those guidelines. And so that's working pretty well, but you may have noticed it's not exactly perfect towards the back. And this is one of the things I wanted to point out, how to fix problems when a technique doesn't turn out exactly as you expected. So let's open up these keyframes again. And if I just zoom into this screen here, just want to concentrate on the background area. So here's the issue. We've got this registration not quite working exactly towards the end of the truck, it's slightly overlapping. And in fact, let's just show you how this works because what we're going to do is we're going to use blend mode, color blend mode, to blend this in with the background. In fact, this is what it looks like. 
Here is his before and after, so normal. And then just jump back into color blend mode. It's a really nice way of actually blending this color over the background. Because of course the color blend mode preserves the luma of the bottom layer. And it adapts the hue and the chroma of the top layer. So we're getting all this nice detail on the side of the truck shining through. But in any case, let's just go back to the end of this timeline. So let's just move this back over. Oops, move the actual line. And let's move the picture over so we can see it. Here we go. So this is the issue. Let's zoom in slightly. The issue is the registration at the back of the truck here. But what we can do is you can go to the point where you think it's beginning to start breaking and then readjust those points. Let's just put that in again and put this one down the bottom here, more or less at the right point, and then track again. And what it will do, it will replace those keyframes that you made previously. Let's just stop after a few frames to make sure it's still staying in register. And if it didn't, you can just jump back. Is that doing it? More or less. Oh, here we go. That's where it begins to break apart. So let's track from there. A few more frames. Check it again. Yes, it's staying in register pretty well. And then let it track to the end of the sequence. So we've effectively now replaced those keyframes and we've got a nice track for that yellow section, which is working now at the end of the lorry. Kingpin is a planar tracker, so what it's doing is taking that original layer and it's squashing and stretching it to fit the perspective of the original shot. And by the way, this is the instance of the first one up here, this tracker at the top right. This is why I had this in, in preparation, because I also wanted to show you that same thing again where we were looking at the registration that didn't quite work on the previous track, but we don't need that anymore. So let's trash that. And here we go back with our main shot. We've still got the issue though of the side, this little side corner of the truck and also the edges of the siding hanging down below these straps. But actually it's been set up in quite a nice way because, let's just show you these straps a bit first. Here's what Leo has set up. And if I show you the keyframes to this, let's just close up yellow layer, open up keyframes on this shape layer. And this is a very simple procedure. This is a shape layer, just animated with a handful of keyframes over the background, together with the color blend mode. And this is a nice, easy way to be able to extend over that background and be able to then tweak this as a second pass. He's done a similar thing as well for the yellow overlay for the side here, for the edge of the container. And that's also a series of hand keyframes on, here we go, on this, just to show you what they look like. Here we are. So this is the mask shape, just distorting over a series of keyframes. Now, what is the best way to approach a shot like this? And why can't we do this single track all in one go? Well, I wanted to show you those two methods and begin to answer the question, what is the correct way to approach this? Well, the answer is, it depends. Are setting up masks faster than tracking? Well, maybe in some cases, but not always if the shapes are changing dramatically. So it's a balance, really. And you could have done, I suppose you could have done the, the yellow background or the yellow coloring to the container as a mask as well, but it was pretty quick to track. So I just wanted to show you two brooches, or rather show you the two approaches that Leo used just to fix this pretty quickly. For the logo for the side, it is tracked in. This is a pre-comp with um, the logo text and the emblem. Let's just jump back here and just show you, here we are. Let's jump up to that logo layer and look at Kingpin Tracker and show you that this, this is the area that's been tracked. So we've followed here the edges of the shape and this is a pretty easy one to follow because of the squareness of this lorry. I've got a couple of examples um, of non-square things to show you shortly, but in this case, 
it's pretty nice to be able to then tie that into this area because we've got a good set of perspective and that helps actually then change the perspective or the, the fake perspective, of course, because this is planar tracking of the logo on the side of the truck here. And the reason that it's slightly offset is because we can set the scale and the shape in the transform pins. So we've got the X tracking, so you can then change where you want that logo to be. And also the size and the score the scale of it. And that's the nice thing about Kingpin. You can actually affect these things after the event. So if you've got something disappearing off screen, or if you want to take a certain area, which is near the camera in this case, and then track that more successfully, then you can offset that and put that on the background. By the way, you can also then add various effects after the event. So Colorista here is, what is it doing? It's taking out the saturation, I think. There we go. Minus around 30% of saturation on this shot. Which probably, which makes it fit a little better inside the scene. Plus also, you can add things like a fast box blur just to make it a little less digital on the side. Or in fact, extending that idea, you could always add, like we got here, an adjustment layer and begin to then treat this before it goes on the side of the truck. So here's an instance of Texturize. This is Texturize from a giant universe. And this gives you the ability to add a series of bits of texture onto whatever your graphic is. What did I choose here? I added this weathered paint. There we are. So we're going to change the scale and the texture opacity. And since we'll be using this again for the side of the truck, or at least you can use it for the side of the truck and the door and so on, then you could set this up once and then have that effect once through your multiple various tracks using this pre-comp for all of them. And in this case, that texture is actually making this a little bit too dark. So let's just bring up some of, in fact, it's mostly shadows, isn't it? Anyway, you get the point. The idea is that you can then tweak this after the event, after you've got your tracking. The tracking for the side works pretty well because we got a nice texture to actually give that information to the tracker. But here's something that sometimes can be a problem, is if you're trying to track something, like, like on the side of the door here, let's zoom in slightly, then it depends on the amount of detail that you've got on the original shot. So the trick here is actually using that tracker to make the area larger so it's taking in details outside that central white paint surface of the door. The fact that the tracker area is then picking up the edges of the door, the wheel arch, and some of the details in front of the door hinge make this a better track. In fact, on this example, I think, oh, here we go. Here we go, I've got two set up here. This is the successful track. Let's zoom into this one. Larger area, which is the same setup as I showed you just a second ago. But this is what can happen. If we set up the tracker to be the smaller area here, then it starts out fine, but as we go on, what happens is the tracking points start to get, well, they start to slip. Can you see that top left one slipping? And that's because, we zoom in here, a shiny surface like this suffers from a lack of detail for the tracker to actually register. As we can see here, because of the lack of detail, some of the points are starting to slip. Shiny surfaces can also be tricky because of the reflections and how the reflections can actually distract the tracker and cause those points to slip as well. It's fairly obvious in this example what's happening. Those nice reflections in the background are the thing that are causing this to slip. Especially visible if I just track over a few frames here as well. So if you've got that problem, Say if you are trying to track a window or something that's highly reflective, then the trick is to enlarge the tracking area and so that the track has more to hang on to. Take in some detail from the surrounding areas. And the reason this is working, again, is because on the transform pins, we can translate where that sign's going to actually appear. 
and then she can, we can resize and scale it up and down. There's a similar issue that might happen on the sign on the front of the cab, which is why in this case, we've got a little more detail on just outside the edge. So this has got some interesting reflections going on, but because we got these extra details, the front grille and the bottom of the windscreen, then that means that tracks pretty well. And in many cases, you can get a good indication of whether your track's working by just having a look at these perspective lines. And it's not always something to guarantee because earlier on in the shot, here we go, they go slightly off here. But that could be because of the changing nature of the angle of the plane that's turning. And the way to check is just to see on the frame by frame, does the registration match, which it does on this particular track. And this is working pretty well on this shot. We pretty quickly added the logos and changed the color of the container. But there's a new feature inside the set of tools in VFX Suite that I thought would be fun to add to this image. So here's the treatment. And this is the excuse I wanted to use to actually highlight the, the glows at the front of the headlights. And in fact, here they are. It's a new feature inside Optical Glow to have the ability to radiate this glow out from a central point. But just to show you how I set this up, here's the adjustment layer. Here's the instance of Magic Bullet Looks. This is using just one of the presets, the day for night preset inside Times and Places. In fact, let's just reset this and just like, set it up again, day for night. And I was tempted to take off the spot exposure for this shot, but actually I quite like how it highlights the center of the shot. I also liked, out of the range of tools, the extra grain that was being added in, and that's courtesy of the Film Print tool. That's just adding this as a final treatment right at the end of the tool chain. And in this example, I found it was useful to center around about 90% on the strength of this. 100 seemed a little too over the top. And this was just a quick thing to actually show off these headlights, but we could work into this more, of course. And the way I set up the headlights is that I isolated them with a mask. Here we are. In fact, let's just turn off optical glow for a second. So here's a mask around those two headlights. Here they are. I'm just using, in fact, let's just turn this on. So I'm using this mask. And if we set this to none and set this to none too, and then come back to the original. So this is why I use the mask, because LumaKey has a lot of other bright areas of the image to deal with. And I just wanted to isolate these two lights without making them too dark, because I wanted to make them the origination point for the glow. So that's why I've just added them in. Here we go. So then we can isolate just that one particular area. And then if we turn on optical glow, let's just reset um, the values here. Let's reset the radiate center and bring Radiate down to zero. So this is Optical Glow, which you can find inside the VFX Suite. And just adding this glow to elements in the shots makes them look better anyway. But in this example, I just wanted to show off that if you use Radiate, you can then use the Radiate Center control to actually pinpoint where they're going to radiate from. Let's just move it up here. There we go. Some of you might be thinking, hang on, can't we do this with shine? Well, the controls are very similar, where you can then pick a point on the screen and then you can manipulate where, it, where the central point is for that glow to be radiating from. But the nice thing to be able to do this inside optical glow is that you're using all that wonderful, beautiful glow, the inverse square fall off. And also the fact that the glow processes at 32-bit, even if your project is set up at 16-bit, still processes at that higher quality level. So you can get a really nice result out of it. In fact, what I did here as well, I isolated the indicators and did just a normal glow with those. So we can just accentuate them at the same time as the other glows and the color treatment. In fact, it would be nice, wouldn't it, if we had some green inside these main lights to kind of match the background. So what we could do here is we could add 
Here we go from Magic Bullet Suite. We could add an instance of Renoiser, which breaks apart the image and adds the grain and then projects the image onto that grain and then comps it back into the image. So it's much more like a film grain. And here we go. Let's just choose a quick preset, say Super 8, which brings up the size of that texture, the size of the grains and the size of the texture as well. And a nice little trick I like to do is to turn on monochromatic grain. So then you get the color from the original layer or from the original source actually is defined inside that texture rather than taking an RGB color. And so in this case, we're beginning to get a grain that is a little more similar to the background area. And depending on whether you want to bring that back, bring out the grain amount or bring down its size, you can then tweak that and so on just to make sure it matches. But before we get too sidetracked, I did want to point out a couple of things using Kingpin that I found quite useful. I wanted to highlight an issue that is always quite, for me, it's an annoying one. The amount of steps you have to do to actually then create something or unnecessary extra steps in production. I'll show you what I mean. I want to put this billboard sign over this easy sign in the background. And if we get an instance of Kingpin Tracker up here, I can begin to just point these two pins at that area and just to track that area or designate that area. Whoops. Undo. Click on my billboards again. I missed my end point. Here we are. And let's zoom in. Now the issue is that in this case, we, the billboard is in a different plane to the plane that I want to be using. In fact, let's just trim out these two pins as well. Just put these down here. And so typically what you have to do is just to take those end or those edges, those four corner points, and we can use that with the from pins and then we can begin to designate this. Let's just zoom out again designate the from pins to the edges of that billboard. But you can see the problem here. We, every time we move these, then it's moving the uh, perspective of the original. And so this could take a while, or you might decide to actually change the perspective, maybe in Photoshop, maybe in a pre-comp, to actually change the angle so it's flat on the screen. Both those are time consuming. So this is where Kingpin Tracker can help. And in fact, what I did on this was to set a mask. So I did the first stage just by pinning the mask here. In fact, let's just reset this and do it from scratch. Just show you, here's the mask on and on, off and on rather. Here we go. So if I add the mask here and then zoom in slightly, we can do that first stage again, where we're designating the area that we want to track. Here we go. And the key thing here, when you're organizing this, is rather than showing the two or the two or the from pins under the render to show the original. Because now, if I get the from pins, every time I reposition one, I can actually see the original element. It's not distorting it. So then if I take those, position them where I want them to be, make sure that's on the top right, and then switch back to to and from pins warp, it snaps into that area. And then if we do a track, let's track a few frames backwards on here, then that means it's a much faster way of being able to work. Here we go, so that is now beginning to track for that shot over those first number of frames. And then you can use all the tricks that we used before, like translating this on, the, on a different axis, maybe even translating that on the x-axis and then make scaling it down so you've got a smaller sign you're not necessarily replacing that sign you're adding something else to the wall whatever you need to do but the the idea with this is that if you use the here we go use the original rather than the warp when you're setting this up it's much quicker so that was one thing and also a quick little thing i wanted to show you is we've been dealing with the angles and the perspectives of these planes, but what if you had something which wasn't necessarily a nice square rectangle in the examples I've been giving you, 
What if you wanted to actually take something which had an alpha channel and non-square edges? So this is just a quick thing I wanted to show you. If you haven't seen this before, this is quite fun. This is a shot that was set up by Seth Worley, uh, one of the fantastic filmmakers at Red Giant. And the idea here is it's an exploration that he created to remove this car from the shot using Kingpin Tracker. And in this shot, you can see that it's handheld, of course, but also the camera op, which I suspect is Seth, actually takes a couple of steps towards the car. So the planes are changing as well. Now, a classic thing to do would be to take this car and maybe send it to Photoshop and do this kind of deal where we can paint it out. So here is, here is the actual car itself layered over that end frame. So that end frame has been sent to Photoshop using clone stamp in a method where you absolutely cannot identify the repeating patterns of this hedge. Maybe you can, anyway. But the idea is that using the clone stamp, we've got that one frame that replaces the car. The trouble is, of course, that when you track backwards and forwards, then we need this plane to actually stay in register with the camera movement. And we could do that with Kingpin. So let's get an instance of Kingpin Tracker again. And in this case, I'm going to target an area behind the car because mostly this area stays in shot throughout the timeline. And if we just scrub this, kind of stays in shot, moves off a little bit, perhaps at the beginning and moves to the left here. And the thing with Kingpin, it doesn't always matter if it moves off shot, because if you've got a tracked area that um, some of it disappears off screen, Kingpin is really good at then using the rest of that detail in that plane to actually keep the track. By the way, you'll notice here that I'm not actually choosing any areas behind the hedge because this might be something that could upset the tracker because you've got a different plane. So especially if your camera is moving significantly and the parallax changes. So it's always a good idea to have one plane kind of identified here. In fact, I've actually got two planes. I've got the ground plane and the hedge. But um, this should work. And by the way, you can see already the problem with this is that we are squishing the end result. So we've squished that layer that we sent to Photoshop and brought back into After Effects. And as we drag these two pins, that's squishing that layer into this area. So if you wanted to get a one-for-one -one representation of this, you can match these two pins to the from pins. So if we set up two and from pins, and then we position these over those exact points, then as I bring them over here, then, especially with this last one, you'll begin to see this background then starts to snap back. Here we go. So it begins to actually, here we are. Then it matches the background from whence it came. The problem with this technique, though, if you're doing it manually like I'm doing, if I just zoom in and then scroll over, is that I'm not actually getting the registration point exact. That's why we got this nice nifty button under the front pins to copy from two pins. And that now will make that registration exact. And then you can see that the, the actual coordinates have been copied over. And previous instances of Kingpin Tracker, you had to copy and paste, but this is a nice new addition to the interface. So let's select that background plate and then start to track backwards. Of course, the place to be looking at in the tracking process is the preview window inside the effects controls panel. And this will give you a much better or a much more accurate rendition or example about which frame is being tracked. And you get a preview, this yellow preview of the two pins and as that tracking is taking place. And You'll notice that even though this shot is dramatically changing from left to right, the, the plane is staying pinned to that screen. So it's a pretty accurate way of being able to then isolate an element. 
In fact, let's just scrub through the timeline here. And this is a really fast way, I think, of taking an element, just painting it out, and then tracking that over the plane. So it's a really quick way of working. So thank you, Seth, for setting this shot up. In fact, let's just show the mask. So this is the original mask from that element, and you'll notice the mask isn't moving. It's the effect that is moving that plane within Kingpin. And this could be used for a situation where you're taking something out of a shot like this, or perhaps if you want to extend a building, you know, make it twice as tall, or add a digital set extension, take a piece of 3D art and add it. In fact, there's a great example on the Red Giant tutorial. So it's redgiant.com slash tutorials. And in fact, this is how to use the tutorials page. Just type in either the name of the tool or the treatment that you want to use. And in getting started with Kingpin Tracker, Stu does a great job of showing how you can use this exact same technique to actually extend a set. So in the example he's got, he's showing how to take a digital element and then comp it into the scene and make it look like it was actually part of the original shot. So a really nice quick way of extending the scene without having to spend a whole bunch of time doing it. In addition to all the tutorials on the Red Giant site, I've been collating a series of small little 20 second tutorials on this little channel. And here we go, here's a, an example of this exact thing that we were looking at about using the day for night reset inside Magic Bullet together with Radiate in Optical Glow to create the highlights on this truck. But the idea about these is that they are only 20 seconds long and they bring out or typify small little techniques as memory joggers, really. Here's the one that we were just looking at down. Here we go. So removing elements using Kingpin. These tutorials are designed to be small little more memory joggers to help you work out how to do something you've done in the past but you haven't done for a while or maybe just to see what's possible or just combining a couple of different techniques. And in many cases I include the project file as a download on here and there are dozens and dozens of them so please feel free to watch them and as indulgent as it is to ask you to search for my name on YouTube there are so many Simon Walkers. So just type in Simon Walker CSI and you should find it. And by the way, I've turned off the ads for these because that would be a bit crazy, wasn't it? To have, an, have 20 seconds of content and then an ad and then 20 seconds. So what you can do is you could just run up a playlist and run them all together if you wanted to. I also wanted to cover another problem that happens quite often, especially if you're tracking footage which has a wide angle or a curvature to the image caused usually by the lens. And that's pretty obvious in this shot where we want to composite the Tiger's logo over the field, but we've got this curvature shot from the wide angle lens to take into account. It's this curvature of the lens that can knock out plane trackers. And that's what I wanted to show you in this example how to fix that problem or how to get around it with a couple of tools from VFX Suite. So this is the original plate. And what we can do is we can add the Tiger's logo that we want to track over the scene. This is a pre-comp. Actually the Tiger's logo, if I just add this to the timeline, this is a pre-comp of an Illustrator file with the strokes keyframed over time. Just to draw this on. And the idea is to have it nicely drawing on as it tracks across the screen. So we'll add an instance of Kingpin Tracker and then adjust the two pins to mimic the shape that we want to follow. In this case, it's the central circle in the middle of the field. And I'm just manipulating these pins to move them around to more or less get that plane. You can see the perspective lines are helping here as well. But there is an inherent problem with this setup because, of course, these lines aren't straight. You can tell on the right-hand side here, these two lines, are, we're trying to make them straight, but they're not exactly lining up because of the curvature of the image or the underlying plate. 
But we're getting a reasonable handle on the sort of plane that we want to track. I mean, look at this top left pin. It's not sitting on that, um, that grid line at all, whereas the bottom left one is. And these two pins on the right, they're more or less in the right shape. So we'll have a go at tracking this. So let's target the background layer. And also I'm going to track backwards because I chose a frame that wasn't right at the start of this comp. Let's just show the keyframes here. So we're now tracking backwards through the comp and we can get a reasonable idea about the accuracy of this track. If we just scrub gently those first few frames, look at that top left pin. Look at how it's beginning to lose its register because of the plane. So I'll just snap to those keyframes and start tracking forwards now. And remember that it's the preview in the effects controls panel is the one to keep an eye on. This is the preview that will give you much more of an accurate indication about how the track is going. After Effects is having to do a whole bunch of background processing, which is why the screen doesn't refresh every time the track moves on to the next frame. Just checking on that preview window, it's not doing a terrible job. It seems reasonably accurate. I mean, we'll only really tell when we look at it on the timeline, but it's still a good indicator of how the tracking is going. So let's just scrub through here and have a look. And it's not terrible, but you can see how some of these pins, especially on the right here, are not keeping the same plane. They're drifting slightly. And I think on the top left, you can see that as well. That pin is drifting out of register. And again, this is because of the curvature nature or the curved nature of the lens. So to get round this problem, you can actually do that with one of the new tools in VFX Suite. So let's remove that tracking and add lens distortion. And this is a tool that helps you flatten, or maybe flatten is the wrong word, undistort the image so that you can take these curved lines and you can effectively make them straight. And you do this by clicking on the lines in the image that then you can see the curve is beginning to be described by the UI elements. And then if you click on remove distortion, then the algorithm changes those curved lines and turns them into straight lines. It effectively unwraps the image and undistorts it. You can do this with horizontal and vertical lines. So if I reset and then choose this line on the horizon, you can see the UI elements automatically start to curve to describe that line. So when I again click on remove distortion, then it then undistorts the image and effectively gives us a flat, if you like, or a, a straight line version. This might be fine if you just want to um, undistort the image, but actually in our case, we want to create an undistorted pre-comp so that we can use that information and then track from that undistorted image. Clicking Create Undistortion Pre-comp has created exactly that, a pre-comp with that extracted image where we can see on the almost pinhole version of it how it's actually being distorted in order to straighten the lines. Um, the other interesting thing is that this is a non-destructive workflow. And in this undistorted pre-comp, you can see that a guide layer has been generated. And as you know, guide layers don't render out the comp. And we can use that guide layer to track without affecting the original plate. So let's grab our Tigers logo again, place it into the comp. And now if we go up and choose an instance of Kingpin Tracker, we can now track more accurately because the planes aren't changing over time, especially in a shot like this where the camera is moving and the planes are changing because of the curvature of the lens. So just set up these pins and you can see it's a bit more easy to set them up exactly on these guidelines. And it's very nice of them to place these tracking markers all over the pitch for us. It's already obvious that this is an easier job to monitor our perspective lines and vanishing points to actually make sure that we're outlining the circle, more or less getting this on those lines. It's much easier just because of the unpacked straightened nature of the shot. So let's track this backwards again. 
And the whole point about this workflow is that we are not affecting the original plate. By applying these changes, let's just check that. Okay, and so we'll track forward again now. So by applying these changes to the guide layer on the undistorted comp, we can track more accurately. But the way the workflow works is that any changes that we make to this undistorted comp then are reconverted back to those slightly distorted curves in the main comp. So we get a more accurate track, but we're not actually effectively stepping on the plate or affecting the original footage. We're not risking making it slightly soft by doing a uh, undistorting and then redistorting or actually keeping the integrity of the original plate. Now let's have a look at the track. And it's obvious that this is a much better track. Those pins are keeping a much better registration and the plane is much more accurate because it's tracking the undistorted plane. And if we go back into the master comp, then those subtle distortions, those curves are automatically added back into the shot. Now the tiger head is a bit big, so if we go back into the original track, the nice thing about Kingpin is that you can open up the transform pins and change down the scale and also translate on the X and Y axes. So we can reposition after the tracking is done and make sure that that tiger is in exactly the right place. And this is non-destructive, so if we go back to the original comp, then those updates can be seen as so as well as the curves, we've got those scaling and those translating changes inherent in the master comp. So I hope that this has been useful. And I really wanted to not only show you some of the workflows, but show you some of the workarounds if you're working with a shot where it has some inherent problems or if you've got something which isn't quite working correctly so that you can get a good idea about how to fix things and most importantly fix them quickly and as well as the tutorials and the resources that i pointed out earlier it's always worth having a look at the tutorials page on the red giant website where we got tutorials for kingpin tracker and also for lens distortion and there's some great tips in these about how to work more quickly. So just to finish up, I'm Simon Walker. I'm the Director of Training at Maxon. Uh, thanks for watching and for spending this time with me. And please feel free to reach out if you've got any other questions or if you want to ask anything or make suggestions for future sessions like this.